Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be how often should you contact women to make them chase you? Well, I got two different emails I'm going to go through with you today. The first one, this guy's 49 years old, and I can tell by just really the nature of his question that he hasn't read the book 10 to 15 times. He's been kind of cherry picking things because he's asking about contact and he's it's obvious he's confusing contact initiation meaning you're the, all conversation threads are closed you're not waiting for a response from her and she's not waiting for a response to you and as i talk about in the book a guy should never initiate contact more than 20 to 30 percent of the time and so you tell this guy is confusing contact initiation with like a text exchange. So in other words, when he texts back, he thinks he's initiating contact, but he's responding to it. And so therein lies his confusion. So you can tell when a guy just thumbs through the book once or twice and doesn't really take me seriously when I tell him he's got to learn it to the point, you read it 10 to 15 times and get to know it so well he could teach a class on it. He gets into a situation with a bunch of different women and he's doing the wrong things because he didn't take the time to learn the material so that's on him but he brings up a good point and then the second email is from a guy he's been out he's in the early stages of dating this woman they've been seeing each other for about four weeks in a row and he typically waits like three to four days after the last date to initiate contact to make the next date and typically as i talk about in the book the phone is just simply for setting dates in the initial stages not trying to get to know somebody not trying to be cute through text and crack jokes. Because especially if you're doing online dating and you're trying to crack jokes with somebody that doesn't understand your sense of humor, it's so easy for things in text to get misconstrued. That's why, and then other guys are trying to get to know girls through text. Oh, I got to text her for a few weeks before I ask her out. And the women get bored and they roll their eyes and they're like, just ask me out on a date. And they don't do it and they get bored and they move on to the next guy. Because obviously when it comes to online dating, Women have all the leverage. And when you look at the fact that 80% of them have their filter set to six feet and above, any of the guys that are shorter than six feet just simply won't match with them. He'll see her, but she won't match, she won't ever see his profile. And so you gotta take these things into con consideration. And so he's been out, this guy's been out on four dates, and the last two dates he's had sex both times with her. He says, but she hasn't reached out once. She hasn't texted because most normal women are going to text a day or two, especially after you start sleeping. Hey, had a great time the other night. Or a, a woman's favorite pickup line, which is, hey, they'll say something like that. They're not going to text you and reach out. And so by not blowing their phone up and incessantly texting them, seeking approval like the video newsletter that I did yesterday, where the guy's constantly seeking a woman's attention and approval that she still likes him to the point where he turns her off because he's constantly communicating he doesn't have the confidence. And what it is is deep down, he doesn't really think he deserves to have love. And so everything he does, everything he says, from his texts, from his words, the tone of his voice, are constantly communicating that he doesn't feel worthy to be with her. And the number one strength characteristic that women love in men is confidence. And so if you're constantly communicating you don't have confidence, you're going to turn her off. And that's what was happening to this girl that this particular guy was dating. He was literally chasing her out of his life. And so that's what we're trying to prevent. We're trying to prevent the guy from chasing her out of his life and contacting her enough to make dates and communicate that he's interested and take her out on dates but not to the point where he comes across as needy and insecure and she just loses interest. Because it doesn't matter what a good guy you are, or how nice you are, or what a gentleman you are. Women only care about how they feel about you. And it's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. And so when you start out dating, especially in the first several weeks, you're just going to reach out once a week, set a date, and then get off the phone. And then what happens is if you're only seeing her once a week and her interest starts to go up, 
she's going to start reaching out and simple things like a day or two after your last date. Hey, I had a great time the other day. Hey, that was really fun. Or that was the best sex I ever had. Or the conversation was amazing. I really, whatever. Hey, she might just reach out and say, hey, or hey, I was thinking about you. Or how's your day going? Or something like that to facilitate him creating the next opportunity for the two of them to get together and hook up. And so as a woman feels safe and comfortable because you treat her right on a date and you're displaying attractive behavior and you hang out, you have fun, you hook up, she feels safe and comfortable with you, then what happens is typically third, fourth weekend, then she is going to start initiating contact. And then what happens is you get five, six, seven weeks in and she's at the point where she's texting you sometimes multiple times a day or just about every day. And instead of you initiating new contact, you just use those as opportunities to set the next date. And this way, you go at the woman's pace. You're not calling and texting too much to where it turns her off, but you're allowing her to come to you at her pace. As her interest goes up, as her level of comfort and safety with you goes up, she reaches out more. And as you facilitate getting together more, when she reaches out more, it makes her feel safe and comfortable and validated to continue doing that. It's not about playing games. It's about taking measured steps and not doing anything to cause a woman to feel like you're insecure or you lack confidence or that you're needy or that you may be a psycho or stalkerish or anything like that that turns a woman off. So the idea is we're just trying to slowly escalate things in the courtship and dating. We're trying to go slightly slower than she is in the sweet spot, even though if there, there's a, a an Instagram reel that myself and the girls and Chunky did, and I think it's closing in on something like, it's going to probably hit today over 300,000 views. And it's talking about that, how I got most guys, their experiences, the more they start texting a girl, they notice that her, over time, she starts to take longer to reply and her responses tend to get shorter, and then she becomes less interested in getting together. And, and where she may have been just a few weeks before, very open and very excited and very easy to make date, dates with, now she's becoming more difficult to make dates with. And she's throwing obstacles and roadblocks in your way. And of course, you got a lot of women that see that, and they get triggered because they got a wound with it probably. And they assume it's no contact initiation and so you see a lot of butt hurt in the comments and women would say oh it's the average one you get a group of women together and you ask about this no it should be 50 50 well when you do 50 50 because i've been doing this 20 years plus now i've been doing this stuff is that when it's 50 50 when i'm doing phone sessions and a guy he's on the phone with me because he had a problem and with a girl he was dating when i hear the pursuing was 50 50 the contact initiation was 50 percent him she was 50% as well, then what happens is at some point he gets friend zone. And this applies in heterosexual relationships, gay relationships, as well as lesbian relationships because it ruins the sexual polarity. When you act too similar, it has a platonic vibe and feeling for it. And if the feminine essence in the relationship gets platonic feelings, doesn't matter what a nice guy you are, she's going to ask for space, She's going to say, I'm confused. She's going to say, there's something missing. I should feel different. There's no chemistry. There's no spark. And so what we want to do is create the conditions where a woman can have enough time and space away from you to wonder about you, to think about you, to miss you. And then she reaches out to you. And then obviously you're going to be glad to hear from her. And then you're just simply going to make the next date. And so it really facilitates having a nice balance of the sexual polarity, the masculine and feminine essence, and making sure the woman feels safe and comfortable because if she does, her interest goes up, her attraction goes up, she'll want to see you more, she's more receptive, she starts thinking about potentially making you her boyfriend, typically week six, week seven, if you're following what's in the book, she's going to be in love and, and hinting at or bringing up in a roundabout way, or even being direct that she's interested in a relationship. And oftentimes we'll say things like, where do you see this going? What are your intentions? Where do, where do you see us in a few months? Where do you, do you see us having a future together? And they'll start bringing up these things, trying to feel you out and see where you are. 
women like mystery. And when you strictly, in, at least in the beginning, just use the phone and text or a message app just simply to fil- facilitate getting together, it also teaches her that you're not going to be available 24-7 because most guys that are busy professionals and have a full-time job, they don't have time to text and chit-chat and call all throughout the day. Because if you start doing that, and then what happens with most guys, they may do that in the beginning, and then they're available a lot, and then as he feels comfortable in the relationship, say six months, a year down the road, then he never reaches out, and then he never makes any effort. He backs off, and then she complains about it. Whereas if your communication is very sparse in the beginning and you just simply use like me, me, I'm 53. I hate texting. I don't like being on messaging apps, even though I'm constantly bombarded by messages from friends, family, girlfriends, whatever. I get people constantly sending me messages. And a lot of times I'll just let the messages sit there. Then when I got some time, I'll go through them all unless it's something that's, that's really urgent. And so I like keeping things like that. I don't want to text any more words than are necessary just because it's a lot of work and I have a lot of people that I know and I got a lot of messages and stuff coming my way. So it's like if if you're one of those guys that's busy like that, it's like and then you start dating a new girl and then you're constantly chit-chatting and texting with her all the time. Once you get over the hump and you're several months in and then you're just naturally going to back off and then she's going to be pissed off because then she thinks you're ignoring her because you trained her that you're going to be available 24-7 and that's what we're we're trying to avoid that. And so this works great across the board, heterosexual relationships, gay relationships, lesbian relationships. It helps keep the perfect balance of sexual polarity. But like I said, you get a room of women together and you ask them about, they'll all go, oh, it's 50-50. And then you do that and they go, oh, there's no chemistry. There's no spark with that guy. That's why it's important to ask the right question. Well, tell me about the guys that you actually dated. Tell me about the guys that you actually stayed with. And then you find out their actions more line up with the things that I teach. So with that long diatribe and explanation of understanding how things are supposed to go, now let's look at these guys' emails. He says, first guy says, hi, Coach Corey, I'm 49. Decent looking, own my own business, which is doing well, and I'm focused on my path. I've been divorced for about four years and found that if you have your crap together, it is easy to get a date, and by following the principles in your first book, take it from there to the Indoor Olympics. I have been out on maybe 150 dates with sevens and above since newly single, slept with maybe a quarter of them on the first date, and about a third of them by the second date. Well, I hope you're practicing safe safe sex, having sex with all those women in such a short period of time. Being playful while also being assertive but never aggressive works wonders. But I seem to be having some challenges when dating eights and above who are in the 40 to 47-year-old bracket, most of them single moms. You can just see the red pill guys going, oh, you don't date single moms. Now, we're assuming that these women are normal and healthy, but he seems to be having a problem with women who are single moms for whatever reason. It's kind of like a lot of the Red Pill podcasts where they have the same kind of women. It's like uh, you know, women that are strippers, that are hookers, that are sex workers, chicks that come from broken families that are just simply not a representation of normal healthy women these are the women that for the most part those are the kind of women that you're going to hook up with maybe have friends with benefits while you're dating and looking for somebody whose goals and values match your own somebody that's constantly dating or only dates those kinds of women it's understandable why they get so jaded and pissed off and they just say well this is modern women is my problem area seems to be the time frame between after a successful first date but before the fourth date. My theory is is that a now keep my eyes. I've been doing this twenty years, and this guy has got a theory. He says my theory is the more mature a woman will choose a man of lower value who is more available to them than a man of higher value who seems less available to them. Well, if she's got a low self esteem, absolutely. And maybe you like dating women with low self-esteem, but I don't. All women are insecure to a degree about certain things. 
But women who have a are insecure, who have mommy issues and daddy issues, especially when they're in their 40s, oh, man, it's just a nightmare to try to date women like that. But you do you, boo-boo. He's, my question is in two parts. Number one, while in the early stages, I limit my text contact and I try to use texting for setting dates with middle-aged women, I wonder if such limited contact conveys a lack of interest and that perceived lack of interest works against me more than the benefit of mystery of not hearing from me. That's just total bullshit. Unlike men who don't mind talking to many women at a time, I have learned that women, especially middle-aged women and especially single moms, in other words, women with problems, He's got a group here. So he's got a high incidence of single moms not reacting too well to this. And if he'd have read the book 10 to 15 times and known this backwards and forwards, he would understand that when you apply what's in the book, it's going to bring out the best and the best and the worst and the worst. Women that got self-esteem issues, maybe mental health issues, mommy, daddy issues aren't going to react too well. And their behavior is they may just get pissed off and dip or ghost you or give you a terse response and tell you they're not interested, that's fine. You want a woman who's easygoing, easy to get along with. And this guy sounds like he's trying to turn women who are difficult to get along with into somebody that's good to date versus just letting her bounce out. You want a woman that's a net positive to your life, not somebody that's getting pissed off after only a couple of dates. That's why you apply what's in the book. Because if you're going slightly slower than she is and she's insecure, she's going to get angry, she's going to get upset, and she's going to get pissed off, and she's going to let you know about it. I My life is a drama-free zone. I do not tolerate that kind of nonsense. I don't date people like that. I don't associate with people like that. I don't have friends that are like that. I want nothing to do with those kinds of humans because life is hard enough without somebody that's constantly getting butthurt. But if you want to continue dating this group of women – this is what you're going to have to deal with, which I think is nuts. And that also seems to make sense why you've dated and slept with so many of them. And it's just none of it's really gone anywhere. Is that, you know, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to continue to get what you've always got. Just like the red pill guys can't ever seem to get away from the chicks that belong to the streets. And then they just, with a broad brush, say, this is all, this is how all women are. And of course, on their podcast, that's the only kind of women that they ever have on their podcast. He says, I prefer to talk, these women prefer to only talk with one, maybe two men at a time and will pick their best available option and focus on that while putting other options on hold. And if a man isn't being as responsive to them as they would like, my theory is that you are either A, playing the field, younger women might not care, older women, I believe, find it unattractive. Well, again, you're not an expert on this. You're still learning and you're writing things in here that are just simply not true because you're trying to rationalize and make excuses for the kind of women that you're constantly attracting. And if you're, if you, I mean, this should jump out at you. If you're dating a group of women that like in this case, single moms between 40 and 47 years old, they're not reacting too well. That should tell you something about their self-esteem. This is what you want. You want to see this undesirable behavior. You want to see them getting upset. You want to see them getting pissed off early on so you can dip. Not try to fix them or save them or be Captain Sabaho. Or B, that you're not that interested in them, which will cause them to go to a lower value option who they hear more, hear from more, and makes it clear that they are really into them. Sounds like this guy's a little insecure and worried about other guys as well. Or I may lose a girl to another guy. That's a scarcity mindset. That's not somebody that's abundant, has an abundance mindset. And also, when I read something like that, does it really sound like this dude has gone out on a hunt with 150 different women and slept with about half of them, I guess, by his numbers? It doesn't sound like it. It sounds like he's kind of bullshitting me a little bit. What do you guys think? Number two, you describe that a man should only be doing 20 to 30% of the calling and initiating But what is the rule of thumb for texting? Well, dude, this is in the book. This is how I can tell you haven't read it 10 to 15 times. Like I said in the very beginning, contact initiating. This means all conversation threads are closed. She's not waiting for a response from you, and you're not waiting for a response from her. One date per week 
until she starts reaching out. And if you're, like you said, when we get to this next email, you see this guy's been out on four dates. She hasn't reached out once. Now, she may be structured. She may be following some book, the rules. She may be following a female coach that has come and learned my work and now is teaching women to use this on men. And what's happening is she's teaching women to basically act masculine, which is going to turn off all the masculine guys these women date. He says, but what is the rule of thumb for texting when a woman is responsive? The phone's for setting dates. If she's reaching out to you, again, just like I talked about at the beginning, say you had your first date and it went well, and then a couple of days later she's responsive, as this guy says, or she reaches out. What do you do then? You make a date. You make the next date. Pretty simple. This is right in the book. These are basic 101 things. Maybe more than likely he hasn't read the book. Maybe he thumbed through it once and he's just been cherry picking off of videos. But, I mean, to go out with that many women and then still be complaining that you're worried about losing chicks to other guys and that there's a small group of women, the, the single moms from 40 to 47, that are giving you a lot of trouble and you get, you keep trying to date them. I mean, the light bulb should be going off that there might be something wrong with your approach because the idea is the book is to, if you just apply what's in the book, you're going to get undesirable behavior from undesirable women early on and not six months down the road when it's much harder to leave. He says, most women will send a text and not text again until you do respond. But if you reply, well, you don't, you don't ignore women. I don't teach that, so I don't know why you're asking that. But if you reply, now you're doing 50% of the reaching out. No, you're not. Reaching out is reaching out when you're not waiting to hear from her. If you're just responding to her text, that's a text exchange. That's an ongoing conversation. That's an ongoing conversation thread that is not closed yet. And if you're just ignoring women in the middle of a text exchange and they're getting upset with you, well, that's kind of stupid. I mean, that's on you. I don't teach to ignore women. It's right in the book. So again, this is how I can tell that a guy hasn't read my work. What is the best practice for text responding enough so she knows you're not blowing her off and that you are still, still an available option for her, but still giving her the gift of thinking about missing you? Again, the phone is for setting dates. So if she's reached out and you don't have a date set and you haven't talked to her, assume she wants to see you. If you haven't talked to her for two to three days and she reaches out, and says, hey, what are you up to? How's your day going? You should assume she's reaching out because she wants to see you. You say, my day's going great, but it's you know even better now that I'm hearing from you. I'd love to see you. What's your schedule like? When are you available? And then you make the next date, and then you get together. It sounds like, based on the way he's worded this, that he just ignores them and doesn't reply at all because he thinks that, that somehow he's confused a conversation with contact initiation and he's trying to be a robot oh i got that 50 percent does not compute uh, 304 uh, uh. <laughs> i know you would say reply to them if they write you but what happens if they reply back a half hour later do you reply again make a date dude the phone is not for giving out information it's facilitating a get-together. And if she's texting you, you should take that as a compliment. You should take that as she wants to see you and make a date. You don't go, oh, what do I do? Oh, I didn't read the book 15 times, but I'm going to give Corey all my theories. Uh, uh, uh. At that point, you're just like every other low-value guy she's been with. Well, I don't teach to ignore women, but like I said, it's obvious that you're confusing a conversation with contact initiation so read the book 10 to 15 times dude there are no shortcuts to success and if you're struggling with something that's so basic as that you haven't taken the time to learn the material you're just making it way harder on yourself than it needs to be and that is on you because as the late great don shula said strong men blame themselves weak men blame others so let's go to the second guy's email it says hey Corey, i've been seeing a girl for four weeks now and have done it most one date per week I wait to text three to four days after our last date to ask her out, and I don't text her at all in between dates. Things have progressed each date to where she's been sleeping over the past couple of dates, and we've hooked up both times. Perfect. So, so far, so good. She's very playful and affectionate when we're together, and it seems like in person her attraction is growing. She has been the one to initiate sex each time after I slowly escalated physical contact throughout the night. 
last time, she's the one suggesting that we go back to my place to hang out. So this is the desired result physically that you're getting because what this guy is doing, he's sticking to one date per week. She hasn't reached out. And if she doesn't start reaching out, that's all she's going to get from you is one date per week. So what's happening is he's going slower than she is. And even when it comes to physical contact, he's slowly escalating it slower than she is to the point where she's so wound up and turned on that she moves things along to the bedroom. And this is typically my world. This is where I live and this is the sweet spot. This is where you want to be with your girl where she's wanting sex from you more than you want it from her. You never have to worry about getting rejected and it's a fun place to be, especially when we're just surrounded by dudes that are sexually frustrated and aren't having sex with like, I think it was yesterday's video or maybe the day before, there was a guy that was like been with this girl for three years and he stopped applying the fundamentals in the book stopped opening her up about a year and a half ago now they have sex once every month or two it's like and he's the one initiating it that definitely means that the girl is not attracted to you because he hasn't made her feel heard and understood she doesn't seem like a hookup girl or hookup kind of girl or a party girl she hasn't had sex in a while and doesn't date a lot she has a great career in a full friend group the problem is, is that she never initiates texting in between dates. You usually say that four dates in and after sleeping together, the girl will slowly start to text more, even if it's innocuous things like, how are you? Or, hey. Which I can use then to set up the next date. But right now, it's basically radio silence until the next date. So she may be structured. She may be following a set of rules. Because there are women out there that, again, have learned my material and they think they're going to be clever. And Oh, I'm going to teach women to use this on men. And so what they're doing is they're teaching women to act like men, basically, which is going to wreck the sexual polarity. And so she may be following a set of rules. I think the book The Rules even says this. You don't ever reach out to a guy. He's got to do all the pursuing. He's got to pursue you. And so what happens is these women attract a lot of very effeminate men because masculine men, men that have choices, are just... If you got a girl that's, oh, I miss you, I can't wait to see you, I had such a great time, versus the chick that's not making any effort, you're just eventually going to spend time with the girl who's easier going and easier to get along with. She doesn't seem to be too structured since she's been open to physical contact on every date. And like I said, she initiates it. But maybe she's purposely holding back. She's purposely not calling you or texting you because she's following some rules. But it's only four dates in here, so you don't know what you don't know yet. I know the fallback you talk about is always reaching out once a week, which I'm doing, but I'm wondering how long I should continue asking her out if she never initiates, but we have a great time on our dates. Does this mean she's not interested and I should stop asking her out so that I can make room for someone who's enthusiastic about me? Well, she definitely seems to be enthusiastic about hooking up, so that's a good sign. But... If I'm a betting man, I would say there's a probably a greater than 50-50 chance that she's a little structured and she's following some rules and she's purposely not reaching out to you. Or should I keep asking her out even though I'm the only one initiating dates? Well, guess what? If you had other women that you were dating, you really wouldn't care too much. You'd actually be probably kind of glad. But what would happen if you're dating two or three other women and you take two or three to uh, say, let's say two other women through this same process. And then by week th three, week four, you've got both of these other women are now initiating contact and their interest is going up. And now you're seeing them more than this girl that's like once a week. What would typically happen is the other girls would make things so much better. That's assuming they're similar quality of women and similar in the looks department, and everything that eventually you just won't even call this girl anymore. And then maybe a few weeks or a month or so will go by and then she'll reach out to you. And you're like, hey, sorry, I got serious. Yeah, and you never reached out. I never heard anything from you. We're fun when we got together, but you never made any effort to, and you never said anything. So I met another girl who was just much more aggressive and made, it, made a mutual effort. It's a lot more fun when the girl makes the effort to make you feel wanted as well. So it's too early to make a decision, but obviously you're learning. And this is, I mean, it's a good problem to have, but you want to be with a, a girl that'll make the effort, not somebody that's structured and following a set of rules. 
Because if you're dealing with a woman that's structured and following a set of rules, eventually they get to be a real pain in the ass. Because then everything becomes robotic. Then you're jumping through your butt to match her unreasonable expectations. He says, I don't want to end a good thing if we're connecting on dates, but I also don't want someone who's just going along with it. Well, I wouldn't say she's just going along with it, but it does sound like she is structured, and that's why I don't recommend you date structured women because it's like if she's really structured, she'll never contact you. She'll never initiate because those are her rules. The, men's, the man's supposed to do all of it. And me personally, I want somebody that doesn't have a problem with ever texting me or, or wanting to get together or letting her interest or attraction be known. You want a woman that acts naturally, not a robot. So I would I would take it day by day and see what happens. I mean, if you get a you know two months down the road and she's talking about getting serious, but she still hasn't reached out to you once, I wouldn't get serious with a girl like that. There's something going on there. Maybe she's following a set of rules. Maybe when you're laying naked in bed after week six or seven and she tells you she's in love with you and wants to be exclusive, I'd bring it up and just say, how come you never call me? How come you never text me? I've never dated a girl that not a single time has ever reached out. It sounds like, you know, what, what is it? You have a rule that you don't make any effort? What's up with that? But right now, I wouldn't worry about it. But what I would do if I was you is I would have other women to date. You got to think of, um, especially when you're learning this stuff, is like the practice squad on an NFL team. You're constantly churning your practice squad. You're constantly got new people getting signed to the practice squad. You got people that are getting dropped from the practice squad. They get poached by other teams. Sometimes they get back together with an ex or whatever. Sometimes you cut them. Sometimes they move up to your active roster and they move a little bit higher up in the hierarchy. So it's too soon to make a decision with her, but... Like I said, if you're a month in and she's not ever once reached out or texted once, that's not normal. That, to me, and from the looks of it, it's on purpose. It's willful. And then the question is why? Why is it willful? More than likely, that's the sign of a structured woman. That's a woman that's following a set of rules. And so that's just the first rule that you've learned about her. Who knows what the other rules may be? She may be a total screwball. You just don't know yet. That's why it would be helpful if you had other women to date. Because then what would happen is the structure girl, you, if you just stop calling her, you never hear from her again, then pfft, obviously she wasn't that into it or that torn up about it. You want somebody that's easygoing, easy to get along with, not somebody that's a difficult pain in the ass. So if you got a question or a challenge you'd like to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. Music.